Hey everyone, um, so welcome to another one of uh, Inferno Fitness Go's virtual YouTube uploads. So today what we're going to be looking at uh, is doing some recovery work, we're doing some foam rolling, uh, looking at some uh, relaxing parasympathetic stuff. If you're not feeling like that's what you need today and you need some high energy stuff, then maybe go back to one of our last videos or we'll, we'll wait for tomorrow um, or try one of our, our workouts on Zoom. Um, if you are here because you want to do some foam rolling, some soft skills and do some of the fine tuning, then stay with me. We should take about 20 minutes and I'm just going to take you through a session foam rolling. Um, I'm doing some recovery work myself because I've been trying to train quite hard, uh, even though we're in quarantine together, getting out for our daily walks isolated and trying to train once a day uh, to do my strength and conditioning work uh, with whatever I've got. So body weight conditioning. Um, so what I tried to do today was prepare, I have a foam roller uh, at home, I have a couple in the car, I also have a tennis ball in my boxing kit, um, I've got some cling film, so this is not because I'm going to wrap myself up like a mummy, um, I wanted to think of some ways that you guys could do some uh, soft tissue release on your own without having specific bespoke kit, um, and just to show you that just using a roll of cling film can actually be a good alternative for you, for you at home. So what we're going to do to start with... Um, and I've put some notes, and what I also do, I've got a stick too, because I've got if I'm going to do some mobility with a stick. If you don't have a stick, use a broom handle, or don't use one. It's just really for me because I quite like having the tactile uh, object to work against. So um, I made some notes earlier and thought about what I do when I prepare stuff, and I just put it on a board for you guys to see if it's in shot. So I just did a little blob in the middle, and I thought, what do I want to do today for my phone rolling mo mo mobility? That's what I want to do today. I want to look at my hips, I want to look at my wrists, I want to be able to relax, I want this to be active recovery for other stuff I want to do. I try and manage my back by doing my stability work on the ground and I've got my, my rug or you can have a yoga mat, so if you've got a yoga mat or a rug or a bit of soft carpet, anything like that will work. Um, I want to look at range of motion through some of my joints to make sure I've got an appropriate range of motion. We're not trying to, to challenge the joint capsule, we're just trying to get everything moving, it's a nice way of... Um, uh, getting a bit of a low sort of endorphin hit just to move the joint. Uh, core control and parasympathetic nervous system. So what that means is that's just looking at getting the relaxing side of your, your body and your nervous system switched on um, as opposed to always being jacked up and looking at high intensity hit, hit, hit. And actually as a stress management, you need both. So we need to do high energy work um, to release energy and to... to to get fit and bone density and muscle and all of the stuff that we know need high energy for, but we also need the low energy to help manage um, stress, keep ourselves fit and healthy. We need both systems, so it's good to have that switch. And I always try and tell clients and people I work with, have the ability to work hard, have the ability to switch off. People that can't do either very well sit in the middle. That's where we would try and encourage people to have both of those skills. Also what I've got, so it's a long preamble, I've got myself a music station, I've got some water, and I had my coffee earlier, it was a ristretto carte noir, it was nice, but it was too strong. So the little pods, carte noir pods, very strong, even for me. So there we go. Right, so start with what we do. I want you to lay on your backs, guys. You're gonna lay on your backs and you're gonna relax. Have your feet down and just gently roll the hips from side to side. I'm actually gonna turn my music down a little bit more. I keep it on in the background just for me, even though I'm recording these videos for you guys, I tend to have it on just for my mental sort of calm. I like to have a little bit of soft background. So having some music on while you're doing this, as long as you can hear me, wouldn't be a bad thing. But if you want to just switch off and have some time to listen and learn, join in, that's fine as well. So I'm just starting with some knee rolls. Now I tend to have my feet about a foot apart, give or take. When they're completely together, I find that it locks up in my hip and I can't get as much range. When they're a little bit apart, I find I get a little bit more hip range of movement. That's good. The next thing you're going to do, bring that knee in. So one leg's bent slightly. You're going to hug the knee and then I'm going to squeeze it in towards my chest. I'm going to hold that squeeze. I'm going to reach down to the ankle. I'm going to just turn the foot in slightly and give that a little squeeze and hug it in. I have a habit of lifting my chest into my leg. You can keep it down if you want. And then I want you just to draw that leg nice and long on the opposite side. So I've got my right leg nice and tucked in tight, my left leg nice and long. Again, it might be a bit of a coach's habit, just have my head popped up like a meerkat all the time. Bring the hand across the knee, pull it across the body, open the chest, the palm up to the sky, and look at that hand. 
I'm gonna squeeze that glute and hold that position, bring it back in. I'm gonna lengthen the legs slightly here. And I'm gonna just look at my ankle. I'm gonna just show you my foot. Ankle movement when it's on longer stretch. Do some little circles. I'll hug the knee in a little bit. A lot of this stuff's really stolen yoga. But really, yoga just takes movement patterns and looks at how does the body work and how does it move. So I like to, 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 to take bits and pieces from different styles. And if you've got a tie or a band, here's where you can actually drop the foot out as well. We're not doing that today. So we're going to swap legs. We're going to get that knee squeeze in again. Good. I'm going to try and bring it across the body. Hold it for a few seconds, get that elbow squeeze round. And I'm going to just drop that other leg down nice and long. So the reason I sometimes wait for that is I want to put one hip and hamstring in position, then I want to drop the other one nice and long and gently lower through the stretch and let my nervous system have time to catch up, so the neuromuscular system to catch up with what I'm doing. Lovely. Bring the hand up behind the hamstring. I can replace the foot if I want, or I can keep it long if I want. I'm going to play around with the ankle joint. I'm going to move the ankles around. Hopefully you've all been doing your walks, exploring relevant and suggested pieces of countryside near your home. I don't work for the government, but I care about everyone's health as well. I want to stay fit and healthy and I want everyone else to be fit and healthy. And if that means going out somewhere sensible, that's a good thing. It doesn't mean going out somewhere not sensible, but you're all adults and so no one bother with telling you this. You've heard this from everyone. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Good, hold that glute, sorry, talking too much. Let the arm go down. Good, start with some soft bridges. Nice, easy bridge work, coming up and down nice and slow. So we're just really just feeling that connection with the floor through the feet and whether I'm pushing through my toes or my heels and whether I've got a long bridge. And I've said this in other videos, but I really enjoy getting comfortable in my bridge now and just getting some of the subtle, the hamstring, the glute, the lumbar, switching that on and opening the hips. I'm going to draw the arms under the body, a nice long stretch through the shoulders. We're going to just pop down, pop back up, and pop down, pop back up, just a few times. Now I'm trying to open up my chest and my shoulder position through my chest here. I'm going to have a little hold, switch on the quads and the glutes. I'm going to relax there. I'm going to bring myself up. So I've had a little warm up through my lower body. I'm going to warm my, my upper body up. And then I'm going to use my foam roller. Now, foam rolling, to give you a bit of a lecture on it, has a bit of a controversial following. Some people really like it. Some people really don't. The science behind why you do it and how you do it is really hard to prove, as with all soft tissue therapy. So massage, anything hands-on really is hard to test and prove. I'm just doing some spinal mobilizations while I'm talking. I should be thinking about my breathing. There we go. So into the foam roll. So what we're looking to do, um, it's SMR, self myofascial release. It's basically like having a massage that you apply to yourself. It will not make you stronger. It will not fix any injuries. It won't do any structural change to the tissue. What it will do is give it a short-term response. If I push this on certain tissues, I may get a short-term muscular response, which may free up a joint. It might free up, um, it might free up a range of motion that I didn't previously have, but that range of motion might return to its previous length or range when the effect wears off. So we need to do this, then apply stimulus for muscular change and adaptation. So in, in, in simple terms, Foam roll before you exercise. Simple as that, if at all, if at all. I'm doing it on a day where I'm gonna do some core stability drills afterwards, and I use it as a way of therapeutic self-massage to feel I'm MOTing through different areas of the body. Whether that, whether that has a real effect or perceived one, I don't really mind, as long as I'm having an effect, and it makes me, it makes me feel good about it. So. We're not here to discuss the research, but I just wanted people that have looked into this a bit more to understand that I have thought about why I do it and who I, who I do it with. So we're looking at getting into the calf and finding different aspects of the calf. Now I've got a bit of weight on my hands, so if your hands and wrists and elbows feel strong enough to hold that position, that's good. If not, you can just put a little bit less pressure. You can do it from an elbow position as well. But for the calf, I find I want to get up into almost like a gymnastic L-sit position and I want to roll down the mid-belly of the muscle. 
and I want to take my time. I'm softening out the muscle and I want to roll the muscle away from the joint capsules. But I don't want to roll the back of the knee or the ankle, but I want to go down to the base where the Achilles tendon starts to taper into the calf and I want to roll through. So for those of you that are runners, you'll probably have a foam roller at home or if you've had a knee injury or a hip injury, sometimes a physiotherapist will get you to foam roll. I'm going to come up to the hamstring. I'm going to skip the knee completely. I'm going to sit tall again. I'm going to get myself into a comfortable enough position and I'm going to roll through there. Hopefully some of you are doing this on your TVs. That's quite cool. Quite like doing the old TV YouTube thing. And I'm looking for different aspects of my hamstring where I might be holding tension. There we go. So right just below the glute, there might be a little pocket or a trigger. So I want to get to that trigger point and roll through it. I want to fish around, not too fast whether or not I'm getting into specific muscles, as long as I feel those trigger points. Good, so I've done my calf, I'm going to work my hamstring and I'm going to flip over, I'm going to do the lateral aspect of my quad. So what I'm not doing, I'm not rolling my ITB. I'm rolling near it, but actually what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to roll deep to that tissue. So I'm looking to get into the quad itself and roll through and just underneath the greater trochanter of my femur, there's a nice trigger for me normally that really frees up my knee joint, sometimes frees up my hip joint if I've been doing a lot of lower body impact. So jumping, running, skipping, and I'm just going to roll the upper aspect there. And I'm going to just push the roller down because I've run out of headspace. Normally I'd work around the roller a bit more. I'm going to roll the bottom part of the ITB or the vastus lateralis. And then I've got this foot overhooked for balance and stability. You also have to think about your shoulder when you're on these lateral positions. So you don't overload the shoulder while you're thinking about your legs. Good, so I'm on the front of my quad now. You get a bit of a bit of a back shot. So I'm at the top aspect of my hip. Right by the hip flexor, rolling the hip flexor. Get a little bit of pressure through there. I might want to just roll through the quad. I'm going to peel up through the quad. I'm going to peel back down again, supporting myself with my hands and my other leg. Good. Now, so I've gone the calf, the hamstring, up the ITB and the hip and down the quad. Now I'm just going to go into the, um, into the adductors here. So I'm going to point out, so it's firing out on my right leg. I'm going to extend out that right leg. I'm going to get that position inside the knee. Bit of pressure. Roll through. I did some did some squats yesterday with some of the some of the guys online. My legs are feeling it now. That's good. Lovely. Lovely. Right. That leg's pretty much covered. I'm going to do the other one quickly, so you guys can do that with me as well. So we switch legs. Oh, and if you haven't got a roller and you've been watching this, I should have said this right at the beginning, but there we are. You can use this as well. So I've got this. I've got the cling film. Now there's two ways we can we can use this. We can either use it like a mobility stick, or I can get into that base of the calf here, and I can put some direct pressure, and I can roll. And obviously, we just take off the cling film layer when we're done with it, and wrap some food in it again later, or have a dedicated foam rolling cling film. I'm gonna get into that position, and I can do the same aspects of my VMOs and my quads. If I wanna get some pressure, really peel and scrape that back. And again, only if you feel this is relevant and necessary. Now I tend to support um, my knee or my, my knee when I'm doing anything on my quad so I don't hyperextend my leg as a habit. So I'll just fold a foot. You might even pop something else underneath it. If I want to get into aspects of the quad here. It's a nice manual release technique for you guys. So we're going to spend about four minutes doing the other leg. So I don't really time when I foam roll. I tend to work off of what feels right when the muscle's done, I move on and I'll fish around for different aspects. But as a rough guy, 30 seconds of muscle, depending on the size of the muscle and the level of tension and the amount of time available to you. So basically, whatever you want, all right? Under the hamstring. Roll through the hamstring, get into the base. Get you in shot. So I'm there. Now what I can do, I can double stack if I want more pressure. So things like hamstrings, I'm not a sprinter or a runner. So I don't, I need a lot of tension to feel it. Some people will feel this with a lot less tension. Some people will have a higher pain threshold. Some people have a lower pain threshold. And you'll be able to tolerate more or less. 
All you don't want to do while we're foam rolling is put yourself under so much pain that you can't function, or you're giving yourself a stress response. So we want to put it under enough tension that the muscle has to, to switch off. So we've got sorts of um, stretch receptors in the tissues that are going to respond to direct pressure, allow that tissue to change. Something to do with Golgi tendon organs or something, I don't know. We can geek out later if you're, if you're interested, then go for a quick Google check. But I think that might be why the stretch response switches off. Woo! That's a lovely one for me. I really like getting into that top part of my, my quad, just below my oh, top of my femur. Oh, good. Special, special sound effects not included. Rolling down. Good, and again, you can overhook, can double stack if you're an absolute maniac and you just love pain, then yeah, then just go for that one because you're going to have some serious good time if you like pain doing that one. I'm not sure I want that much pain in my life. Oh, good. Now I'm going to go into the hip. So I naturally roll into that hip flexor, get a little squeeze on that pocket, and then down the quad. Roll down the quad, nice and long, that wide hip on the opposing side. Just about got enough space, I'll just slide under the couch. Good, and then the VMO, I'll just go a different angle to what we did earlier. Extend that leg out, turn the toes out, and get that foam roller pointed out the same direction. I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time on the VMO. Lovely. So we're gonna move up now. I might move your camera up a little bit, guys, so you can see what I'm doing a bit more. Do, do, do. See how that looks. All right, the back. All right, so the upper back, a little bit of upper back now. So I'm gonna pop that down on the floor. I wanna skip out my lumbar, get in between the shoulder blades, get into a soft bridge. I'm gonna hold that position, I'm gonna to start to roll down nice and steady, nice and slow. And I'm looking to get into all of the structures that tie into the scapula and the shoulder blades. I might want to look into my spinal extension, my thoracic, and maybe a little bit of my lower C-spine, but generally speaking, I look at thoracic spine when I foam roll, and I look at maybe the top of my lumbar, but realistically, we're dealing with T-spine, we're dealing with rhomboids, we're dealing with traps, we might be dealing with some lats in a minute as well, and we want to open the body up and get into extension. So this position here, I rest my head in my hands, or I might open my palms out and drop my thumbs down. Or I might open my chest out, or my back rather, and stretch my palms up to the sky. Try and really expose some of that muscle tissue. And I can even angle on left and right as well, which is sometimes effective. But for most people, just going down the midline, supporting the head, this is your key position, and just stretching back over the foam roller. It's really quite a safe thing to do if you've got nothing wrong with that mid-back or that C-spine. So just be aware if you've got something sensitive going on there, don't put direct pressure on it. If you're a normal human that goes about your business, then this is okay. But obviously, check with professionals in person or on the phone or one-to-one -one if you need any better advice about using manual therapies, okay? Cool, so that's most of my phone rolling done. One more drill. We're looking at the lap. So I'm gonna take a side profile. I'm gonna just externally rotate my arm. I'm going to expose the armpit to the, to the camera and I'm going to get just under the armpit there and I'm looking to get into some of the structures that sit into the shoulder joint here. So into sort of the lap, teres major, and we're getting in there. So I'm looking at that position. I'm going to put some direct pressure here. And that direct pressure is really nice. I'll just have a little move when I'm there, see how it all feels. A little bit of soft roll. Lovely. Now I'm going to flip round to the other side, so if you want to do the same. Get that roller down. Externally rotate the palm or the arm out. Show it to the sky. Get into that position. Find that trigger point. Find where that pressure is. We're still looking for the muscle. We're not looking to get any joint aggravation. And we're there. This is a great one if you're trying to open up the upper chest when you're doing overhead movement, pull-ups, overhead press, snatches. Anyway, you want lots of range of motion. Like just freeing up the neck and shoulder in general. Good, so that's my foam rolling done. I feel quite nice for that. So now I tend to capitalize after I've foam rolled with doing some light mobility drills and doing a bit of activation work on my abs and glutes and then I call it a day. So I'm not trying to get too sweaty, just trying to move nicely. So 
This position, I can either focus on my lumbar, or I can sink back into that stance there, I can sink back and I can have my toes up or down. So again, not really right and wrong with movement. Sometimes you want to be here, sometimes you want to be here. Generally speaking, you want to be able to tolerate load in as many different ways as you can. Train your body to tolerate load and move. I'm just drifting left to right to free up my shoulders, free up my back, get a bit of movement, and then I'm going to focus on the shoulders now and the lats. So now I'm going to get a long stretch position with the arms, I'm going to press my head into my fluffy rug, open my chest, muffle, muffle, muffle. Oh. I'm going to relax up again there, it's good. And now I work into my wrists. So my wrists always need a bit of management, I tend to push, pull, climb, box and stuff. Nice to have a nice bit of natural wrist movement. I want my fingers facing my quads if I can. And I take one hand up, put the back of the wrist on the floor, give it a little stretch on the back, reset it. Other hand, flip it over, give it a little stretch on the floor. Good, into my pigeon work. So I'm gonna stretch out my glute, open the chest. We're getting a nice glute stretch here. Hold that position. Now I stay tall initially. Just to get the stretch, I might roll through and across. I might relax my forehead down. I might stay nice and tall. It's good to be able to have a bit of change when you move to your mobility. Just fish around for the tight spots. Good, now as I'm by the sofa, and I'm assuming some of you guys will be as well, I'm gonna pop my laces up. If I had laces on my feet, I'm gonna hold that glute position there. And I'm gonna sit nice and tall, so I can be here. I can be here or I can reach to the foot. Now I quite like just getting into that stable stance, making my core hold me up. So I'm holding that position, breathing nice and relaxed to open the hips. So we've gone from wrists and now we're, tick we're ticking off the hips, the areas that I wanted to get earlier. I'm gonna switch over. I fully reset before I swap sides. I'm gonna spend a bit of time on this glute, giving it a bit of respect. And this one feels different to the other one. So it feels sore in a slightly different place. So I'm registering that, I think, well that's deeper, and it's more central. The other one was, was a bit more superficial and a bit higher up. So maybe the way I'm squatting, the way maybe I'm moving a certain way when I lunge. So it's just a, a, a thought to say, well, how, what's that mean? What do I need to do differently there? Good, I'm gonna pop up those laces again. And now I straight away feel more challenged on this hip than I did on the other one. So that's interesting. I know now that I'm less comfortable here than I was on the other side. So maybe my right hips reacting differently, maybe my left glute as a twist in the pelvis. And it's important never to worry about variation. It's always going to happen, but it's just what does it mean? How do you make it? How do you adjust your training around it? So I need more support this side. Lovely. I'm going to open up my quads a little bit now. So again, quads and hips just going to open up. Stretch out and through. So palm down, reach across and over. There. I'm gonna reset and switch sides. Open up across. Whoa. A little bit of foot cramp. So I'm gonna stretch out through the soles of my feet. I'm gonna get into a little box. I'm gonna really sit over there. My feet are quite close together. I'm not in like a deep, Aggressive warrior, just stretching across the patella tendon into the quads, head down, relaxing, doing a little golem pose. <laughs> Good, I'm gonna do a little bit of hamstrings, then we're gonna do the upper body, then we'll do some core and we'll call it a day. So classic down dog now, open the hips one way, I'm gonna press up and over. Now I tend to hook my little hands into my rug because it's fluffy. If I was on a yoga mat, hopefully it would stay nice and stable. Open the hips and chest. Nice big calf, hamstring, chest stretch. Don't be too worried if you haven't got a perfect down dog. Now relax again. Walk your hands back, give yourself a little breather, roll the shoulders off, take some pressure off. I'm gonna do that one more time in the down dog. Get my pelvis moving. Push back into that down dog stance. So we're here. I like to open the hip one way and then the other. And my feet are in line with my hips. My arms are slightly wider than my shoulders. I'm not a yoga instructor. I just really like using some of these movements in my training routines. Good. 
good and then relax there, beautiful. So we'll do a little bit of lightweight neck and shoulder work. So we'll do it sitting down, normally I do it standing up. So I'm gonna take a little seat, I'm gonna cross my legs. I'm gonna sit really tall through my posture. And what I wanna do from here, I wanna bring my arms out nice and long. I'm gonna check I can sit cross legs straight away. Some of you are gonna be feeling like you're falling forward. And that is again, maybe a sign that the hips, hamstrings, lumbar are fighting you a bit. So being able to sit nice and relaxed in this position, and just being in that kind of posture, that's a good position to be in. But if you feel like you're being pulled over, maybe there's some stuff going on that's tight through the lower back. So from here, I'm gonna open up my chest, bring my palms out to the sides. I'm gonna have one arm up, one arm down. I'm gonna hold that position, I'm gonna retract my head. And I'm just gonna switch my hands a few times. So from here, I'm just doing a bit of neck and shoulder mobility. That's good. I'm going to over and under my hand position from here. So again, these drills, I do these from prone, so I do these face down a lot of the time, but also do them standing, and today I'm doing them seated. Purely so we've got a good shot, but also it's actually a nice bit of variety for me, so I'm going with that, and being a bit playful. So, oh yeah, on my bullet points I didn't talk about, I wrote down three or four things I wanted to achieve during this session for myself, as well as to get this footage out for you guys. And one of them was to play, one was to actually feel like I could be creative and go with the flow of how my body felt. And that's something that a lot of training programs don't account for because they can't. So you have to have an independent thought to think, how do I adjust this around my body today? I'm gonna show you a shot from behind in terms of what I tend to do for neck and wrists. I'm gonna hold the wrist with the opposite hand. I'm gonna put it down, I'm gonna look across. I'm going to switch hands, put it down, I'm going to look across. And that's it. And I can spend longer there and do more repetitions if I wanted to. Um, so there's two things I wanted to do last. So lastly was show you that with, with tennis balls and glute balls where we, where we go with this. So there's two key spots and they tend to be based around the girdle. So looking at either the glute or the pec. So my pec minor and my glute med tend to be really good target locations. So you can go for instance, you can go to other areas too, but generally speaking, you can get into the pec minor and you get in glute med, and that's gonna help free up either the shoulder or the glute and the hip. So I'm gonna look a bit mad, like a roll around the floor, but I'll show you now what I'm trying to achieve. That ball is gonna sit in the top corner of my pecs. So it's not the pec major, so the major muscle group here, it's a smaller muscle that sits deep to it, just below that clavicle in that shoulder joint there. And that's a nice little trigger point for me to open up my chest and neck. So I'm going to use this on the floor. You can do it on the wall. I'm going to spend about 15 seconds here. I could spend longer. I'm going to spend about 15 seconds here. So we're going to roll onto the floor with our tennis ball and put a bit of direct pressure on the chest. I'm aware this doesn't make for the best YouTube viewing, but I hope you can see roughly that I've literally tried to apply that pressure onto that pec minor in my chest. And I'm gonna do the other one because I get a workout as well, okay? So I'm gonna lay on my chest, get that ball in position. I'm gonna press with my palm down, press my chest into the floor and move a tiny bit of movement through my chest to get into that tissue. Whoa, lovely. You can do that on your glute as well, but we'll do that another day in a different video. Last thing I'm going to do, we're just going to switch on a little bit of our lower abdominals because for me they're a target muscle that I need to hit to keep my pelvis stable. Um, and then we're going to do a little bit of relaxation and we'll call it a day. So lower abdominal work really tends to work best when we have the legs moving around the core. Upper abdominal work tends to work best when the upper body moves around the core. So this position, the load tends to fire from here. This tends to work from here. I'm certain there's research that says other things, but for me, I feel that's what works, so I'm gonna go with it. So I'm gonna over my hips here. Now all I'm gonna do, one leg at a time, I'm gonna squeeze my knees into my hands there, and I'm gonna bring that leg up. Now I'm gonna have that fixed, continuous bend, whilst making a nice brace through the core, stable lower back. I'm gonna just flex that, bring it back up to there. And I can control the length of the lever. I can control how far in it comes. Now for me, I'm comfortable for about there, that's about right for me. Always under a bit of tension. Now what we're trying to avoid doing, we're avoiding this. This is no good, we want to keep that bend the same. Bring it back up, all right? I've got one more, one more thing I was going to use. 
that. You guys can use a stick if you've got one. You can see it now and think, oh, I'll do that later when I hit the gym next time or when I have access to that sort of thing. But I've got myself my, my mobility stick. I quite like using it when I'm doing my core work. So from here, I'm gonna make sure I've got room. So I do, I'm gonna extend out to here. And I'm gonna get into that nice hollow hole. So this is gonna be the last thing I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna just do a little bit of stability work and then I'm gonna switch off, do some relaxation. So I wanna squeeze my chest up and forward. I wanna bring that mobility stick to my shins, knees or quads. Hold it for a second. Make sure you're keeping the tension throughout all the way through here. I'm gonna bring it back. My biceps and my friends, my biceps and my ears are friends. Oh, I'm gonna squeeze it back in. Now this is the sort of drill you can do for reps or you can do for time. Or like today, we're just gonna feel the muscle. When we feel it's had enough, we're gonna rest. So we're setting ourselves no targets in this workout. It's just for the joy of movement. Squeeze. I'm gonna have a short rest. Have a good breathe. I'm gonna do one more set. So we're just gonna do six reps, nice and long, good bit of strength, bring it in, squeeze and hold. I'm gonna squeeze. That's two by my book. Three. And as I start to fatigue, if I need to, I flex my knees. In a perfect world, I'll lock out my quads. Four. And I'll be under constant control tension. Five. One more. And relax. Couple of easy bridges. And then roll the knees, and then bring yourself up. Right, well done guys. Last thing you do now, if you're still here, we're gonna do a little bit of guided, well just a little bit of relaxation. I'm just gonna encourage you to do it. So just having this time to, to do this is so good for your, um, your mind, your soul, your hormones. So uh, it's good. So we're gonna spend a bit of time, 30 seconds, just doing some relaxation work. So hopefully you're still there. Let's lay on the ground. And I'm just gonna relax. Bring my knees up, start to roll my knees, gently come to, take a second to get back in the real world, and I hope you all have a very lovely day. And I'll see you soon.